Welcome back to the Oracle Mobile Application Framework YouTube channel. In the previous video, we looked at using Google's Chrome and Spec Developer tools for debugging the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript of your math application. We're now going to consider the equivalent on the iOS platform, Apple Safari Development Tools. For all intents and purposes, the reasons to use Safari Development Tools are exactly the same as the Chrome and Spec options in debugging the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript of your math application. So I won't repeat myself here. I'll leave you to review the previous short video for that information. In order to make use of the Safari Developer Tools for debugging the web content of our math applications, we need to consider two main parts, the device and the browser. First, configure the device or simulator we'll deploy our app to. The device or simulator must run iOS 6 or above, though at the time this video was published, iOS 6 was the minimum requirement for math anyway. Next, enable web inspection in the device or simulator. You do this via the device's settings for Safari. In the Advanced menu, turn on the Web Inspector option. From there, we connect our device or start the simulator. And finally, we deploy and run our math application. Of course, if you're deploying to a device, you'll need to add the provisioning profile, which is covered in our other deployment videos. Once we've completed these steps, the other major task is to set up the Safari browser on your Mac to act as the remote debugger. Note that Safari is only available on Mac OS X, not Windows. As such, we can't debug iOS applications on Windows PCs or Linux, just OS X. If you're stuck in this regard, and consider then deploying your application to Android and using the Chrome and Spec debugger we looked at in the previous video. But obviously, if there are iOS-specific bugs, this won't help you diagnose that issue. Now, Safari needs to be version 6.0 or above. Safari versions are dependent on Apple OS versions, so this means you need OS 10.8, which is Mountain Lion, or newer. In reality, there have been numerous reports of Safari builds where the developer tools just don't work, so if possible, try upgrading Safari to the latest version, or Google for issues around remote debugging on your specific Safari and OS version. This Mac is still running Mountain Lion, so I'm using the latest version of Safari that comes with that, 6.2. Once Safari has started in the Preferences menu, click the Advanced tab and select the Show Develop Menu in Menu Bar option. Then we can open the Develop menu. Note the iPhone, iPad, or iOS simulator options, which will give us the ability to connect the remote debugger to the selected device or simulator. Here you'll see the name of the app that's running. If you see no inspectable applications here, make sure that you've started the app and that you have private browsing off on the device or simulator. This is back in the settings for Safari. Ensure Do Not Track is off. Now we're ready to debug the application. In Safari, you'll see two pages for a math application, adf.backchannel.html and bootstrap.html. We'll ignore the first page, which is a back-end math implementation detail, and instead select the bootstrap.html page. This opens the web inspector with the raw HTML code of the page open in the math application on the device or simulator. If you watch the device or simulator while selecting individual elements in the HTML, you will see the item highlighted in the device or simulator too. This provides you a visual ability to see what actual HTML code is running on the device as well as the hierarchy of tags. If you want, you can right-click on a tag and select relevant options to copy, edit, or delete the markup at runtime. In the left of the window, you have a tree describing all the resources consumed by the page, including images, JavaScript files, style sheets, and more. You can select any of these to open them in the main editor. With the main HTML page open in the editor, you can open the styles, which have by default the rules for styling of the selected tag. This is very useful for CSS debugging and working out which style is winning out. Note that certain properties are struck out, implying they have no effect, and style classes and properties at the top override those at the bottom. The Rules pane also allows you to enable, disable, and modify certain properties at runtime to see what effect they'll have. This can save you an unnecessary round trip in redeploying the application just to see if something works. 
notice the Inspect button at the top of the Web Inspector. If you're having trouble locating a component's HTML in the page, you can select the Inspect button and then click on the relevant component in the iOS simulator. Obviously, this option isn't available to debugging on a real device. The resulting component's markup will be highlighted in the HTML main editor window of Web Inspector. Finally, if we open a particular JavaScript file used in our app in the left-hand menu of the Web Inspector, it opens in the main editor where we can add breakpoints and debug our JavaScript pretty much the same way that you do in a regular IDE. There are a couple of limitations to using the Safari debugger. Firstly, if you want to debug the Java rather than the JavaScript in your math application, you have to rely on JDeveloper to do this. Secondly, if there is any JavaScript, HTML, or CSS code that fires when the application starts up, there's no way to see that code executing as you can only attach the Safari remote debugger to a running application. Oh well, you can't have everything. So, just like the Chrome Inspect debugger that we covered in a previous video, we recommend you take time to try a few dry runs with the Safari Remote Debugger. The more you become familiar with it, the more useful you'll find it in your day-to-day -day debugging of your math applications.